What's going on fam? This is Rob from QB and Kennel. Today we're going to be doing a Q&A, but we're also going to be talking about how to bathe your dogs in vinegar and water. Uh, I just posted a video here recently and I've had quite a few of you ask, you know, what percentage of vinegar, what percentage of water, how do you do it? Show us exactly. So we're going to show you exactly. Um, so I, I came out here and I went ahead and bought me one of these metal troughs in Tractor Supply for $99. And I filled it up with water. Today's a hot day here in Texas. And Genesis, believe it or not, actually likes being in this cool water. And we have another pool for them. Anytime I fill it up, she literally goes in there and bathes in it whenever it's hot like today. So we're going to get into this as to how do we do the vinegar bath uh, with the dogs and what it's good for. And also we're going to be doing cute. So uh, the very first step uh, that we do whenever we're going to be doing a vinegar bath is we want to rinse the dog with water fully. And the reason for that is because that water is going to serve as a medium to be able to get into every crack, crevice, and whatever in between so that that water with vinegar could actually go in there and do its work. Uh, the reason you want to bathe your dog with vinegar, especially now that we're switching from spring to summer, is because typically during the winter we all have a tendency uh, to give our dogs a more carbohydrate filled uh, kibble. There you go. Uh, more carb carbohydrate filled kibble. And what that does is it actually feeds uh, the mites that all dogs have on their skin and you might start noticing hot spots and whatnot. And one of the ways to fix that is simply changing the kibble with lower carbohydrate but not too low. Uh, I've always said the 24-20 rule, 24 protein, 20% fat, and, and with a carbohydrate, uh, if you can, that it's not excessively bad. What do I mean by this? If you start seeing things like sugar cane or beet pulp or things like that, maybe the best thing is to go into a raw diet if your dog is breaking out because obviously your dog is allergic to something that's in there. And whenever um, the weather changes like this and it warms up, the dog starts uh, producing the sebum, which starts feeding these mites on the base of the hair, and too much of that is going to cause you the hot spots and all these other issues that come along with it. So in order to prevent all that, what we do is we go ahead and start adding a teaspoon of vinegar, apple cider vinegar, into a, a large bucket of water uh, for the dogs to drink. Uh, because the vinegar actually helps with the breakdown of carbohydrates. In addition, we go ahead and change the diet uh, maybe to a more raw uh, diet and if not, a better type of carbohydrate diet and even lower percentage of carbohydrate. And then in addition to that, uh, we also give our dogs the vinegar water rinse. Uh, we do this once every two weeks. In this case, we're doing it um, we just did it last week, so we're going to do it again, um, and that's fine. You know, you don't want to overdo it either, but at the same time, you know, if in the beginning of, of summer, you know, between spring and summer, you do it, you know, once a week, it's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, we're going to be showing you the percentages, but first and foremost, what you want to do is make sure you rinse the dog down, and there's water, and you have a medium such as this to be able to get it everywhere. Okay, so first things first. Buy yourself a big old gallon of organic apple cider vinegar. You want to make sure it has the mother inside. It's only going to help if it does. Um, because the other one, I don't know if it's synthetic or not, but it loses a lot of its properties. So you want to make it as organic and as pure as you can. Normally, what we will do is we would get a measuring bucket such as this or any other measuring bucket for that matter. And what you want to do is at first like we like to go 50 50 and that's 50 percent water 50 percent vinegar um with time you could also go one third vinegar uh two thirds water there's nothing wrong with that uh once you've rinsed your dog uh but again i keep saying and harping on it you need to rinse your dog with water so that when you do pour this it gets to the base of the hair if you try pouring uh this mixture without having your dog wet it might not get all the way to the bottom and it will defeat its purpose. Once you get your mixture done and your dog's been rinsed, then what you want to do is simply pour it. Now in our case, for example, uh, she's in here in this, in this uh, metal trough, so we're going to just pretty much pour the, the vinegar directly on her. Um, and obviously that's going to mix with the water. Uh, probably the percentages is going to be obviously a lot less than say a third, a third to two thirds water. A third vinegar to two thirds water. 
but that's fine. You guys understand uh, what it is that we're trying to do and essentially uh, what you're trying to get at. If you could get a trough or something like this that's going to hold water and pour the vinegar in there and just let your dog sit in there for a good 20 to 30 minutes, um, it's actually also going to be doing the same effect. And what the effect that it does is vinegar serves... Okay, sorry folks, uh, the camera just got overheated uh, due to the the sun and the heat so uh, we went ahead and switched over to my phone so if you notice the resolution difference now you know the why what I was trying to get at is um, the vinegar serves as a balancer pH balancer on dog skin and that's gonna help uh, with both a bacterial and also a uh, mites outbreak uh, and like I said before usually when the hot weather months come it throws an, um, an unbalance of pH on the dog's coat because you've been giving all this carbohydrate, which, because dogs don't sweat, they let it out through sebum. Now, through the cold months, it's not, you know, too big of a problem. But once you get into the hot months, um, you know, it, it can really outnumber and, and overforce uh, the dog's immune system. And once that happens, uh, pretty much you could have a full-blown outbreak. And at that point, you, you might even have to end up going to the vet. So in order to, be, to prevent these things, one teaspoon of, of um, raw apple cider vinegar in a large bucket of water and also bathing them with vinegar and water if you want to go 50 50 that's fine if you want to mix it in one of these mixing buckets also if you want to go a third to two-thirds water that's fine just make sure you, you have them in some sort of a receptacle or, or pool or in this case a metal water trough where she could sit in there and the water could just do its thing with the vinegar in it uh, for a while, for a good 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, the dog's not gonna complain because the water's nice and cool. So basically we're gonna go ahead and pour vinegar on her and it's all over, okay? And we're just gonna let it mix, let it mix in there, let it mix all over and let it do its thing. And Jenny, she likes it. She likes the water. She's, she jumps in a pool that we have for them by herself. And it uh, didn't take much for me to be able to get her in this water trough. And she's been able to cool off. So you can see her. Yeah. Doing this. All right, fam. It's been 20 minutes. As you can see, <laughs> Jenny's just wallowing in the water. And... Uh, there you go. Oops, didn't want to get all that in there. But that's fine. So now uh, we're essentially just gonna take her out and let her air dry. Once we let her air dry, uh, she, as we wait for Genesis to dry up as she's tied to our holding stick, uh, I'll go ahead and answer some uh, Q&A questions. I see here that I am Kuvos. Uh, is asking where it is that we post our pet quality pups. Uh, we did, we've did, we done it in the past couple of videos. I've explained that if you download our QBN app, uh, we will go ahead and, and pretty much announce it there. Uh, the last puppy that we put up on there, her name is Roma. Uh, I made a video, I posted that up. Uh, I consider that to be part of the announcement, but nonetheless, as soon as this video has finished being recorded, I will again re-announce that we have a pet, uh, pet quality pup available, and if you're interested, all you gotta do is... Next Q&A question, Leafy Watson is asking, is XL the biggest an American bully can be, or is there such thing as XXL or triple XXL? Uh, right now, as far as registries are concerned, uh, the American Bully XL is the biggest you can have. Uh, typically what differentiates the American Bully XL is by how far the withers are from the ground. So right now 20 to 23 seems to be the universal thought between all registries for that to be XL. And that's for the males, for the females is 19 to 22 at withers. Anything greater than that, um, it isn't recognized. Um, however, um, 
A lot of us in the bully community refer to them as XXL just as a, a term in order to uh, you know, give the understanding that this dog's withers are gonna be above 23 inches if it's a male or 22 inches if it's a female. But technically, XXL doesn't exist, has not been recognized yet by the major uh, registries. So I hope I've answered your question. Next Q&A question, Connor Wright asks, uh, are American Bully XLs good uh, for personal protection if given the right training? Connor, I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, American Bullies XLs, they, they pretty much could do anything you want them to do. Uh, with the correct training and the correct consistency and persistence, you could pretty much get them to do anything. They could be an any dog, they could just be a companion, they could be a personal protection dog, or they could just be an all-around, fun-loving family dog. It's all up to you and the amount of time and training you put into them. Midwest Prince is asking, uh, what does it matter if you get the perfect puppy if eventually it could uh, develop a flaw? And that he recognizes that not every single litter has perfect puppies through and through. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, man, if you go back to videos that I've posted uh, before, uh, I've said it before and I'm going to go ahead and say it again. Uh, even the best breeders out here, uh, if you're getting about 30, you know, out of 10 puppies, if you're getting 30% or three puppies that are near perfect and have, you know, a slight flaw here, slight, a slight flaw there, uh, you know, you, 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 you really are like at the top of your game if you're hitting around 30%. Um, then you're going to have around a 50% uh, middling, if you will, and these usually are dogs that have everything else usually where it's supposed to be at except they either have a major flaw or two slight flaws that are no noticeable. Um, these dogs uh, I have concluded that are still breed quality dogs, uh, breeding stock dogs, but they're not going to be show quality dogs. And then lastly you're going to have that last 15 or 20 percent of the dogs in the litter that are just pet quality and there's nothing wrong with these dogs. Uh, you know they, they can still move, they can still play they can still do everything except they're just not breed quality you don't want to breed those flaws into your program because then it's just going to set you behind also you don't want to turn around and sell this to to a paying customer as a top quality pup and then it ends up being pet quality and he tells the whole world now all of a sudden your brand is taking a hit so these are the things you have to take in, in, into consideration um, I've had quite a few of you uh, write to me uh, some of you are, are very ecstatic about the fact that we've come out and said you know the, these are pet quality pups and we're going to sell them as such uh, but in reality this is what we all need to be doing as a breeding community is the only way that we're going to be able to improve not every single litter is going to produce a top a show quality uh, pup top to bottom i'm the first one to tell you um, we've been doing this now for a while we're producing great quality pups but not every single pup that we produce is going to be show quality and that's a fact Next Q&A question, DSG519 is asking, um, is it only the females that are east-west that I go ahead and, and make them pet quality, or does that also include the males? Uh, DSG, I gotta tell you right now, man, uh, when it comes to breeding, you know, you're gonna get 50% of the DNA from mom and 50% from dad. Now, sometimes you're gonna have mom that has more dominant genes than dad or vice versa, but either way, whatever's good for the goose is gonna be good for the gander. So, if I have a dog that's straight up east-west, no, that would not be breeding quality. It would also be a, a, a pet quality. Again, keep in mind, um, what we distinguish between breeding quality and pet quality is not just the fact that the dog has east-west. Is one, how prevalent is it? Is it a major flaw or is it a slight flaw? Is it a slight east-west, okay? Is it something that I could breed out of it, first of all? And then secondly, we're looking at if the dog has a secondary major flaw. Does the dog have a high rear? Does it have a stiff stifle? Does it have an underbite? Does it have an overbite? If it has a combination of these things, then yes, we go ahead and just make them uh, pet quality. Um, this dog is still part of the QBNK family, but I just don't want it representing us as far as breeding is concerned. All right, fam, I've had quite a few of you asking me questions such as, should I buy this puppy or this one? Should I breed this, this female to this male or to this male? Uh, what do you recommend on this? How do I fix this flaw? 
fam, I can tell you, sit down and look at my videos. I've already put out a lot of information, but if that's not enough, we do provide you with QBNK consultative services. Uh, I do charge $50 for my time, but I will sit there, break your dog down. If you have pedigree on bully pedics or anywhere where I can see the parents uh, and grandparents and, and anything else behind that, I will try to break everything down and give you my best advice and my best recommendation, as well as if we have to bring in diet or talk genetics or whatever the case may be. Again, it's QBNK uh, services, uh, consultative services, and the way you get to it is you download our QBN app, go ahead and hit on consultative services. Uh, you're gonna be sending me a message directly. I will answer you. Uh, once we've come to, uh, uh, um, once we come to a consensus on what your question is, I will then tell you to go ahead and send the funds on the very app. All you gotta do is click on the PayPal button, send the $50, and then it's on. We're gonna sit down one-on-one, -on -one. we're gonna break it down for you and give you the answer that you're looking for. Brody Day is asking, how it is that I know that one of my dogs is pet or show or breed stock if you gotta wait a year to really uh, realize or find out? Well, Brody, I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, the reason I made this last video uh, with our female Roma, she's only nine months old, I qualify her as pet quality. Uh, I can tell you right now on a weekly basis, uh, we rate our pups all the way up to adulthood. Uh, I know how my blood moves. I know what I'm seeing. I'm also seeing how the flaw is developing, if it's clearing, if it's not clearing. And at this point, I feel comfortable enough, comfortable enough to make a decision as to this uh, dog being pet quality. Um, as far as when you're buying a puppy, whether it's pet, breed, or stock quality, I've already spoken this in depth before. You're absolutely right. You gotta wait until a year, year and a half. As you well know, there are some flaws that are not, that are not gonna pop up until the puppy's six to eight months to 10 months. But at the same time, when you show up to buy your pup and you're seeing a high rear and you're seeing a prevalent east-west, bells and whistles need to be going off in your head. Okay, yes, these flaws may clear eventually, but more times than not, they're not gonna clear. So it's really up to you. Um, all I can do is give you the best source advice. Uh, that way, whenever you evaluate the pup, you're looking at the pedigree, and you're making a conservative and intelligent guess as to what is breed, what is stock, and what is pet. Um, I hope I've been able to. All right, fam, this is Raul from QBNK, and this is gonna be the end of our Q&A. As you can see, She's still drying up back here, fighting with a fly or something back there. Who knows? Uh, but uh, this has been it. and we'll